Super Mega Theater Builder of Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers and Patreon build, no less. This is actually part two. Part two of the Tumbling Feathers in build. A build for uh, my August Patreon competition. Uh, uh, the winner of which, when I have a Patreon competition, the winner of each competition uh, gets to... Uh, uh, get a piece of scenery made by me, Magathia Builder Worlds, uh, for their own collection. The competitions are usually, give me a great idea for a piece of scenery that I can make on a video, and uh, I'll make it for you. And uh, this time in August, it was finally won by a B&B player. There have been several competitions beforehand that haven't been won by B&B players, although that's where this whole channel started. Um, I've made scenery for Silver Bayonet, and for Fallout, and for uh, Necromunda. Um amongst other things uh, but this time the piece of terrain uh, is a burrows and badgers model it is an inn called the tumbling feathers the concept of which was come up with by the fabulous matt callow uh, and he writes all about the tumbling feathers and a number of other burrows and badgers albion and northumbrian inns and pubs and taverns at his blog spot uh blog which i can't remember what it's called but i'm gonna put it on the screen right now uh, 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 there you go matt Bit of plug for you there. The Tattle Tavern, Tattle Talent Tale. Ta oh, I don't know. It looks it's on the screen anyway. Um, uh, the idea of this inn, if you haven't seen the first part, actually, if you haven't seen the first part, just press pause now uh, and go and find the first part. That'll be the best thing to do. That'll give you a whole breakdown on what the first this whole thing is about. But if you want to skip to the kind of like the bit with the detailing and the finishing off and the painting and the the last bit on the rotatey roundy bit and the cool stuff, then I'll get you up to speed. The idea is is that the uh, Tumbling Feathers Inn is an inn built uh, initially by birds, for birds, up in the trees, over a road in some forest somewhere on the roads of Albion. Um, originally, there was no way in for ground-dwelling creatures to get into it. It was all kind of like perches and landing platforms and that kind of thing. I suppose squirrels could have got in without too much bother. Um... But as the popularity of the inn and over the years grew, uh, they put a staircase in through one set of uh, uh, in a hollow tree up into the whole thing, and it's kind of like grown and evolved, uh, which is exactly, funnily enough, what this model has done. Uh, you might remember it started off with two Sylvanian family treehouse trees. There they are, one, two. Um, and then I started just adding different platforms and landing bays and things. We've got one tower that's been built up here, it's going to have a hexagonal tower on top of it and then another bit across here and I've got this wooden platform here and a set of stairs. And, um, there's the doorway in the base of the hollow tree that's going to go up here. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's coming on. I'm really pleased. Uh, if you watched the last video, you'll know that I had no plan for this beyond the discussions I'd had with Matt. Um, and, uh, you know, I've changed my mind a number of times. It's been very interesting. I know that a number of viewers like to kind of like watch that process take place because... Yeah, there's nothing scripted. There's nothing planned out with this particular model. It's very much kind of like happened and evolved and grown organically, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm trying to achieve uh, the look of the building. So it's been built and added to by different over owners over its decades of existence. So it doesn't matter if it's not all slick and neat and, and kind of like uh, all put together. And as uh, one of... My uh, subscribers, a friend of mine, Paul, said, um, of course, the other thing is it doesn't have to look perfect in the same kind of way because it was made by birds. They haven't got hands. Look, birds in burrows and badgers, they just kind of like use the feathery bits at the end of their hands to kind of like manipulate as digits. So it's not going to be perfect. They're not going to be exact craftsmen. So all of that has given me the ability to make something kind of whimsical. I haven't said it in the last video, but I'm going to say it now. i say it again, in fact. Um... I mean, I'm enjoying this whimsical build. Don't forget the Magathea Builder of Worlds uh, whimsy uh, drinking game, of course. Every time I say whimsy or whimsical, you have to take a shot. That is up to about four now, by the way. So, um, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a fantasy model. It should look kind of fantasy. Uh, and I think that it, the one thing I can say about my model making in, in this last year, 2022, is that, especially with my fantasy buildings, they've got more fantastical. Um, it's interesting how some people will enjoy watching this kind of process and like the fantasy build tied to reality, which I kind of like. I think my problem is, is I'm only now, after 
three or four years of making B&B models and making stuff like this, getting over my hang-ups of trying to make everything look human and, 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 and very kind of Mordheim or Warhammer fantasy battle, uh, which is where I'm kind of tied to. I liked making those models because you can always use one of them then in a, you know, without the skulls and the, the stuff. You can use them in, in a European World War Two game or in a, you know, a... a Silver bayonet game or whatever, but what I'm really trying to achieve with these B&B models is that fantasy look uh, There's gonna be a bit of credibility and a bit of reality, but on the whole I want it to look different to fantasy games that I've made before so I'm kind of like yeah making it work um, And it's a great way. I like the, the they're kind of like taking somebody else's idea the patreon competition always chucks that idea up Thank you very much if you don't know about my Patreon, you can check it out here at um, patreon.com slash Magathia Builder Worlds. Uh, go there, sign up for a price of a cup of coffee, and you too can join in uh, a Patreon competitions to see if you can get me to make a piece of scenery. Next draw is in December, so we'll probably be not long after this video comes out, I hope. So, what are we going to get on with now? Well, let's take a closer look at the model, and uh, um, let's have a quick plan for where this video is going. I mean, I say a quick plan for where this video is going. This video was probably going to take a week or more to make. And by the time I'm shooting the last bits, I will have completely forgotten what I've said in this introduction. So um, the plan might not kind of like uh, get past first contact with the enemy. But I understand that that is the way the plans are supposed to work. So, uh, yeah, come down here. Let's take a closer look. Yeah. So what have we got to get done in this video? Well, I'm intending this video to be the second and final part of this build. Um, he says, optimistically, you never know, there might be a third bit. Um, what we've got to do then, uh, we've got to build a hexagonal tower here, room here. Um, uh, we're going to use this floor, I've already cut out from last time, which is going to sit up here somehow. Um, and, uh, I've got to build a floor on that. And then we're going to put foliage on everything. Um, there are a number of suggestions that folk have made. Several people suggested I put a door on this uh, tree trunk here so that's the exit from that staircase there that would actually solve it I had thought and I had made a trap door to go in here but that's just gonna get in the way of gameplay so actually putting the door kind of door and putting it on there will probably work a lot better so I'm probably gonna go with that idea uh, thanks guys for suggesting that um, I also had suggestions of suggestions being made how to cope with this gap here because I'm going to thatch this, but I might have a bit of foliage, a bit of branch coming out here. That might be kind of cool. Um, several people suggested attaching this with magnets. That may well happen, but I don't think it's actually going to be necessary. By the time it's all painted up, it's all going to fit beautifully anyway. Um, he says, as it falls off, you bastard. There it goes. So, uh, what are we going to do first? Well, I can make separately, I can make this part of the building... That's going to go on there, and it's going to stand. It's got some uh, supports to stand on this uh, uh, beam that goes across here, which I was hoping was going to look a bit branchy, but it's not looking that branchy. It's looking really solid, joisty. But that's going to support that. I could build this building. The idea is I could build this bit and this bit separately, and then stick them on, and then botch something in between the two bits that join them together, which will have a little set of stairs and go into here. So... Uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to start then on, on the hexagonal tower. That's what I'm going to do here. I will, of course, also have to make more of this staircase here. Because uh, this is then going to rest thus. So I need stairs going from here up to here. I was last time going to try attempt to make a spiral staircase around this neat tree trunk but actually the problem with spiral staircases apart from the fact they're bloody fiddly and they take ages is that they're not very practical from a gaming point of view so i've gone for this st steep st stairs here and then this square platform which then means i mean that can take a 50 millimeter base so from you know from gameplay point of view it's much better tiny little set of stairs bit there and then i'm going to make another set of stairs up to this bit here when I put it in place. But I'm not doing that yet. We're going to start with a hexagonal room. And to do that, I'm just going to need to bolster wood the right width. Conveniently, because I'm clever like that, I managed to make the lengths of my hexagon same thickness 
Was this boxer? That was accidental. Quite cool. Right, so I need we're gonna need five walls to start off with. Because I'm gonna take this one, wall isn't gonna get added. Um and I might decide whether I'm gonna add two stories to that or not. We'll see how it goes. Quite a tall model already. Um definitely do need five walls. I need a steel rule. I should have tidied up my workbench really before I did this. Really, kids. Top tip, modelling tip, magazine modelling tip. Keep your work area nice and clean and neat and tidy. Then you've got space to move things around and you'll be able to clearly see the wood for the trees. Or, in my case, keep your workbench like your bedroom was when you were 17 years old. An absolute pigsty. Um, and then you'll have everything you need to hand anyway. You'll just have to dig around for it a little bit in the cat. Oh, well. Here we go. Let's make some walls. Hold on to your hats, kids, because this is going to... Get this here tower built. Okay, now I've got... <coughs> now I've got a bloody cold. That's what I've got. Um, apologies if this rest of this video sounds like I'm partially dying. Uh, that's because I've got man flu. Uh, well, I haven't because I'm kind of still on my feet and doing stuff, but... The whole house is full of ill people and we're all dead and dying. It's not COVID, but it bloody well feels like it. Um, anyway, enough of that self-pity. I have got five wall panels. Three I've done with windows, arch windows, because they're going to be nicer. They're going to go up the top here on this bit of the model. And uh, two that are solid wall panels. Now, I know that you'll remember... I know that you'll remember that this is a hexagonal room. And I've only got five wall panels, but that's because this sixth wall panel here isn't required because that's going to be open to um, uh, the rest. I'm going to botch walls in between that and whatever this bit here ends up looking like kind of thing. So uh, that's the kind of current plan. Um, so I'm going to stick these on now. I've also... That trap door that I've uh, I made earlier uh, in the last video that I was going to go on the floor in this room down here is now going to go on the top of that trunk there. <coughs> um, although, what I really, really could do with is the trunk continuing up through here. Um, but that's a bit of a pain in the ass. So look at that, I'm about to change my mind. It would be cool if I made a what if I made a if I made a 25, if I made a bit of trunk out of XPS foam that went through the roof. Or not make the trunk just for simplicity's sake, assume that it goes through the roof. Um and then have the roof with bits of tree sticking out the top, which I can lift the roof off with the tree on, and then there's enough space in there because if I put a bloody great big tree trunk in the middle there, it's just gonna get away of models in it. Uh, been that idea. I might even been this idea, but I'm not been in this idea, which is sticking with five walls on. It's going to go a window wall over here, so you look up the road that way. Blank wall over here, because I'm going to have some kind of pot bellied stove or something over on the wall over there and the chimney out the side. Window here, blank wall here, window here. I think. Um, so I need to find some glue. Going to wheel that on, stick it on, see how it goes. I'm probably going to have to trim these down a little bit. Because I think they're probably too wide. Um, some of them are trimmed already. And I'm going to stick them butt against the floor as opposed to standing on the floor, I think. I'll have a look. Yeah, hmm, not sure. Um, but that will then give me uh, this bit here, which I can then have a bit of tree and foliage and the like growing out of. Kind of thing. So that's what we need to do. We need to stick that on there. Stick that to that. Stick that to that. And it's going to be a bit higgledy piggledy, I should think. Which is kind of like what we're going for, really. Won't be nice and neat. Because, <clears throat> as pointed out by a couple of people watching the last video, this one was made by birds and they don't even have proper hands. So let's find some glue and stick this on and see how it goes. So, um, wall section's on successfully glued they're going to need a little bit of extra structure i think on the inside uh but now we can see the uh this great big gaping space here it's fine i mean the raven is one of the biggest models in the range and that stands in there quite nicely um 
Got another 50 millimeter base to figure out somewhere. Even the sparrow, oh, even the red kite <coughs> with its wings up, by the time I put a roof on, would fit in there if I need to. Um, so from that point of view, that's good. Um, I've now stuck on this platform, which is going to have the other building on it. And what I've done underneath is I've added a number of supporting joists uh, that are going to hold and add, add structure to the, um, the floor, keep it all in place. I might put the odd pin in there one way or another just to hold them together. But they should, when the glue's gone off, that'll be nice and solid. And uh, now I'm going to build on top of this. And I also need to build another little set of steps up here. So I think I'm going to have a door here um, with a set of very steep steps. This platform here then uh, is cool because it's kind of like a um, halfway stage. So figures can run up a couple of steps, stop there, and then run up the next steps to where the door will be. Um, might even have the door here. Uh, my problem actually is the fact that the tree trunks stop which from a, a realistic point of view is a pain in the bum because I want there to be foliage and tree on the top. Uh, from a gaming point of view, I might just have to assume there are trunks in here going higher up. <coughs> Otherwise, uh, we just lose too much space in the model, uh, which is a bit of a pain. It is starting to look, yeah, kind of evolving and which is what I'm going for and a bit hodgepodge and a bit mixed because of the different levels and various other things so um, yeah full on whimsy quota take a drink uh, he's, he's working pretty good I've added another strut in here to support that so um, yeah and there are no equal straight and so I don't know um, the next thing I think I was thinking about putting another layer on here but actually what I might do is just make it kind of like tall pointed hexagonal roof to go on this bit <coughs> with then foliage sticking out the top of that so i think the next main uh, effort has got to be to make walls on this section and then marry this section to this section with a set of steps and another bit of wall that needs to look kind of like nailed onto the outside to keep the weather out more than anything else and then i can work out what the hell i'm doing with the um the foliage keeping my options open I've got chunky um, XPS foam uh, if I need to make a tree trunk here and a tree trunk here we'll see how we go but it's kind of like it's coming on it's quite a lot of height to this model now um, ten and a half inches to the top of the wall here and by the time I add uh, that's eight inches to this platform whoops Eight inches to the platform and this platform is probably going to be about three inches tall there so that'll be 11 inches before i put roofs on um so yeah tall tall model should be pretty neat so characters falling off or falling out a bit uh they're gonna find out all kinds of problems i think i'm definitely gonna to have to have a platform sticking out at least over here or i just really love this idea of different levels of platforms and different ways up and purchase for birds and all that kind of thing which is i think what matt was going for really in his kind of like uh his ideas lots of different places where birds are coming and land and come in you know it's like uh, an inn made out of actual bird boxes kind of thing so from that point of view yeah it's kind of uh <laughs> Ooh, <ow. laughs> oh crap and yeah, yeah, platforms over the road and that kind of thing. Pretty neat. Uh, so, yeah, keep going. Next bit, floor here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we got now got to... I haven't done anything here at all. All this bit over here. What I have done is made this rickety set of stairs off this platform. It's all a bit wobbly, it's kind of cool. None of it is kind of like flat and level. Each stair is kind of like wonky. And I really wanted to get the, a kind of like hodgepodge, not great, worn old set of stairs rather than something really neat and, and architecturally beautiful. This is out in the countryside, they don't want to camp. It's kind of cool. I'm going to trim up some of these bits of balsa a little so they work better. I've pinned some of the 
stairs together so it all holds in place, especially while it dries. Um, place the 50 millimeter base figure on there, and it only just about fits. Um, so I think what I am going to do is actually going to trim back some of this wooden platform here, make this building slightly shorter, granted, but I'm going to cut it back towards where the tree trunk is. Um, and that way there, the more figures will go up, stand on that staircase a little better. I haven't got any other painted ones. Well, I've got, oh, there's a painted sparrow. He kind of stands there all right, but bigger things. So that's the next thing. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Then I do really, really need to get on with making this upper floor. Um, and at the minute, straight over there, might have bits hanging out. I, I don't know. See what happened. Like I said in the last video, there was no plan for this. I'm making it up as I go along. I genuinely am making this up as I go along. Um, I'm gonna see what it takes me. <clears throat> I'll probably use more of these 3D printed arch windows um, purely because then that will give a bit of coherency to the model. And I've got loads of them lurking around somewhere or another, so from that point of view, that's kind of cool. But these stairs clearly are not made to take a base. Making stairs on models is always, always a compromise. Do you go for accurate stairs, number of stairs to meet the feet, or do you go for stairs that could take bases? Which is why mine often do this with a platform halfway up. Because actually, that's only... An inch or so up, so it's one inch of movement to get up there from the base to the bottom. And this is still like two inches roughly to go from here up to here. So if I cut this back here, um, and I can have a doorway here, I think. Let's do that, see how it pans out. I'm right, making good progress now. Still not going to get it all done before I go to bed on this evening, but. <clears throat> made a wall that's going to go on here like that and I just noticed how not square that is which is great because uh, I'm doing most of this without rules or anything else I'm just doing it by eye I've cut this taken this one bit of bolts off it's fairly thick cut a rough archway again I don't want it to be neat and nice and lovely it's just a rough archway that's going to go into the end and stick that in here that fills up the gap between between the two which is kind of cool and that's going to get stuck in I'll hold that in place I've made this wall which is going to go on the back over here I've got to cut out some little steps here off the bottom of these three supporting pieces so that will go on and down this side down here that's going to then sit on that side nicely nicely and I'm going to do the same I've done the same over here on the front of this one so that's going to sit on there they're making really good progress. I'm really liking this. I've now got an archway through into this bit here. Ah, wall falling off. Um, don't know where the blood bar's going to be, mind you. But, uh, yeah, we're kind of getting there. Um, I might have the bar run <coughs> all down one side. Maybe over here. Or over, over this bit, possibly. Who knows? Um, hmm. I need to, obviously, then, when this is stuck in botch in the wall that's going to be in there because that's no longer a hexagon so that's been botched which is cool and um yeah and and go right across here which will then have again probably foliage or something in between that these bits here because this is going to be yeah a tower or pointy roof and roof here and then foliage <laughs> wow it's really started to come together um I'm liking this a lot. And now, like, like I said, look, here we are. Quick measure. 11 inches tall now, without roofs. So it's going to be at least 13 to 14 inches tall, this model. Um, but kind of neat. Um, it could do with a platform over the road here, but all those, though, I oh know. I think I might put a platform on the back because there's more space over the, the model sticking out. But then there's platforms, platform, platform. Windows for shooting out of. Got a chimney sticking out the side there. Well, oh, it's uh, yeah, coming on. Doorway in there. 
looking pretty cool. Right, let's stick these walls on and see where we're at. I've got to make the last couple of walls and a door to go over here. So in the top hall then, I'm just putting in the odd cross brace. I've used a bit of bolster here. This whole model I decided not to do with XPS foam or foam board. Just with bolster. Bolster's pretty rigid. Um, you could carve into it quite nicely and, and it saves the space, which is good. <coughs> I'm using some flat-headed dress pins, dress breakers pins, just to go through into the beams and to add a little bit more strength while everything glues. Last thing with soft bolster on the hole is you can push it fairly easily. Stuck it at the other end already. So here we're just going to take the flat end side of a knife. Because it hurts my delicate little fingers to push it through. But that's through three layers of bolster there and that will hold that nicely in place. <coughs> Give it a nice bit of rigidity when all the glue is dried. So what I've got to do now is door away a couple of walls. And then work out the roof structure. Uh, which is where it's also going to work with how on earth I'm going to do foliage, which either you might could possibly be workshop foresty kind of stuff. But it's kind of cool because I could have it sticking out in different places. But I've got another idea as well. So I'm going to kind of like hold on until I've got the roofs done. Certainly work out the shape of the roofs. This roof over here, uh, hexagonal roof. I think it would be quite cool if it's kind of tall. That's going to be a bit fiddly. Um, the roof on the, the top hall is going to be probably just a triangular prism. Um, and I could do most of it in thatch, which means it shouldn't be take too long to actually produce. Model-wise. So from that point of view, we do very well. But as the time on this given day, Friday the 25th of November, is now 10 to 1 in the morning. I'm jacking in and going to bed. Not going to get any done tomorrow, right? Going to see one of my favourite bands I haven't seen since 1995, Amorphis. In fact, it's gig season. We've already seen Nightwish this week. And next week it's going to be Powerwolf and Shinedown. Different nights. It's cool. So, um, yeah. But uh, this will get done in the next little while. We're winning, we're winning. Right, so since we last, <coughs> since we last big chunk, what have I done? Well, I've added a couple of cross beams here to strengthen the whole structure because made with like two or three millimeter bolts of wood, it's not particularly uh, robust. This has made the whole thing much more robust. Um, at this end now, here I've added this back wall sections and a door down here. Um, Which is kind of cool. Um, I've also added in the stairway in here in my archway and the botched joining up later on bits. So the hexagon is no longer a proper hexagon. It joins up here as well, which is kind of cool. I've got to make the roofs. That's the next. Before room. I make the roofs, however, I thought I'd have a. I had a bit of a play around this Saturday afternoon. Look, look, I stay in my eyes. Ugh, I got cold, it's horrible. I'm uh, all well, decongestant. But the building goes on. The hobby doesn't stop. Um, up late last night as well. Out of the gig. Uh, who was it last night? El Rute and Amorphis. Yes, very metal. Um, but, oh, the uh, the guy who stopped me at Wembley Arena on Monday night last week, uh, the Nightwish gig, uh, to ask me if I'm Magathea Builder Worlds. Thank you very much, that was very cool of you. It's amazing, yeah. There's definitely a, uh, this kind of like Venn diagram. Heavy metal fans, war tabletop war gamers, the intersection in the middle. It's kind of cool. Um, it's like, hey, look, I'm on telly. Well, computers. Well, I don't know, phones. Actually, I don't care. Anyway, what was I? Oh, yes, I'm going to have a bit of a fiddle and have a bit of fun for a moment. I mean, I'm looking at this. There are all sorts of little bits that are going to need to be covered up where they haven't kind of joined together very well. Like the end of this bit of the wall here. 
Uh, there's gaps there. That'll end up with foliage or stuff growing up in one way or another. It's all fine though, because that all adds to the whimsy. Uh, okay, the whimsy count going up. It's starting to look really quite cool though, I like it. Um, but what I'm thinking about is the fact that this is a tavern. There's my foot print inside now i know uh, matt that doesn't look anything like your footprint mate i'm sorry but um you know this is how it's turning out um but i'm thinking about how this is going to operate as a tavern <sighs> it's always really difficult when you make these models as to how much stuff you put inside it um the easy solution would be to leave it completely empty completely empty that would be the easy solution would it not yes indeed you can move the most amount of figures around but i'd also like to have something that kind of like um Gives the feeling that this thing is definitely a tavern. Um, but I want to be able to make that as efficient as possible and not ruin the amount of playing space. So, first of all, I think I need to go and find a whole bunch of tavern stuff. So, for a and b build, I don't do this very often, but it is now time to go digging through the cack. Cack, 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 cack. Yes, it is. Uh, now's the time where I go and dive into boxes and boxes of spare parts and stuff. Um, this is my organised cack I'm going to be looking in, though, because I've got drawers up here. See these drawers? These drawers here are all full of organised cack, mainly, mainly sci-fi and fantasy bits and pieces. Um, apart from anything else, that's where all the Mantic Terrain Crate cack goes and any other sets of stuff that I buy. Um... Uh, to do with well furniture and, and things these things like I said it's always difficult you could if you were careful or uh, uh, not careful end up turning these things into tiny doll's houses with all the tiny little things in uh, and whilst that's really tempting and I love that miniature kind of like filling it I don't want to overdo it but I do need to find some cack so I'm gonna <coughs> grab some drawers down they tend to look like this look mostly organized lots of little things and bits and pieces uh, and I can see what we can see one of those, um, and uh, get another one, get another one, hang on, that one, oh yeah that's better, right okay let's dive into this, see what we can find, I need enough stuff in here to make it look like, I need enough stuff in here to give the, the, the thing a tavern kind of feel to it, and then I'm going to play around for a few minutes just trying to fit it into the tavern. Uh, where it's going to go in best. Then I'll paint that stuff and then I'll decide whether I'm going to actually leave it in there permanently or put it to one side so it could go in and go out. I kind of want to put it in and make it all look like a you know, proper pub. Um, yeah, right, okay. Let's dig in the cack. Down here. Come on, come down here. This is where the cack is. Follow me to the cack. Follow me to the cack. Cackity cack. Cackity cack. Don't talk back. Sorry. Yeah, okay. My bad. Now, of course, being Magga through your builder of taverns, I do have various taverny things. I buy different tavern sets all the time. This, of course, is not a tavern set. This is, uh, yeah, a gibbet uh, from Iron Gate a scenery. Resin printed, kind of cool. Got a skeleton in it. I could hang that, couldn't I? I could hang that. Be like a bloody birdcage. That would work. Uh, no, not a tavern. Um, what have we got? Oh, we got Iron Gate scenery lanterns. They're going to kind of come in quite useful, I think. Um, I've got various taverny things. The tables like this, that's actually from Whiz Kids, I think. The Whiz Kids, they the people who make the Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I've got a Whiz Kids tavern set. Look, there's, uh, yeah, the wonkiest shelves in the world. Look at that. How crap is that? These are supposed to be primed and ready to paint. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, bits of bar. Oh, there's a, oh, cool. All right, okay. They're quite small bits of bar. They're kind of nice. Look, they've got a lattice work on and bits, and there's a little bit of detail behind, but not too much. Oh, sweet, and and a corner piece as well. Look at that and that lovely. Are we getting this? Yes, we are. Um, that's kind of cool. Um, then on top of that, there are barrels. Uh, there's a barrel with a, a tap in it. I've got some others like that as well here, which are from Mantic Terrain Crate 2 uh, from the tavern set they're pretty neat I like those they will definitely feature um, it's a bloody great big bar there that's from Terrain Crate let's put that to one side hey I oh know let's make a pile of stuff uh, table yeah yeah that bit there little round table um, bits of bar with kids barrels stack that over there 
There's some lovely lanterns. Uh, I might have the odd one of those kicking around eventually on this model, although I bought these mainly for Benfield. They are from, where are they from? Bad Squiddo Games, I think. They're pretty cool, but I might not feature on this model. Um, uh, oh, we can have a weapons rack inside. Leave all your weapons in the door. Oh, oh, one of these. I like these. This is also from Terrain Crate. Look, there's a wine rack, bottles and glasses and everything else. That's really cool. Um, 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 um. Fireplace. Yeah, that will be cool. Terrain Crate. I've even got resin stuff from... Oh, damn, who are they called? This is one. These, this is resin stuff from, from one of the companies that I've bought resin stuff for years and years and years from, and now I can't remember what they're bloody called. Um, they were making resin scenery, cast resin scenery, and nobody else was. Uh, I'll have to come up with their name. In fact, when I found it, I'm going to stick it on the screen just here, just so uh, they don't get left out. Um, big terrain crate tables. A bit too big, really, for this, I think. I don't think I need to worry about that. Um, yeah, so already, all of a sudden, I've got enough stuff. I just don't think I'm going to borrow, bother with. I mean, look, here's another one. Uh, bar stools and stuff. I'm, I'm not going to mess around with bar stools and chairs. They're just going to get away. So I reckon that's probably enough for me to have a route through. Like I said, isn't it easy when the cack is kind of organised? It's not all organised. Look at that. Whiz Kids bottles. That's cool. Tiny little clear bottles. Um, left in the packet so I didn't lose them. I'm not entirely stupid. Um, yeah, organised cack. That's pretty good. Oh, look. Whoa. Can't remember. Um, who are they from? Yeah, again, the name escapes me. Little set of tankards. They're pretty wicked. Um, yeah, I bought a load of stuff from them. And I can't remember what they're called either. Shite. There goes my old, old fuddled head. Um, yeah, if I come up with their name, I'll stick them on too. Um, yeah, cool. Right, okay. Let's have a closer look at some of this. Right, here we go then. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I pulled out. <sighs> Definitely want the fireplace. Fireplace, nice stone fireplace. I've used a number of these. This is from Terrain Crate. Uh, that would look really cool if I found a deliberate place there. I have left a couple of blank walls because I wanted a fireplace of some description or another. So I'm, I'm definitely going to need that. Um, uh, and I want barrels. And I'm, this is, I've got several of these and this is too cool not to use. So definitely going to have that in there. It's really whether I, what kind of bar I go with. Uh, the Whiskey's one, bits of that. That looks pretty neat. Um, there was something else I saw as well, which I didn't get out. Hang on a minute. Which I could just get away with using as a bar. Again from Mantic Terrain Crate. Um, it's just a sideboard really, but that would work quite well as a bar. Um, oh, it's about the same size as that. Okay, that's kind of neat. Let's check that out. Um, yeah, all right. Well, let's have a look inside the model and see where we're going to put things in. Oh, I don't know how well this is going to work because I've got the whole thing on a bit of a wonk on a slant, but. Now, my initial thought would be to use this area here, this hexagonal tower as the main bar. Um, and I, I quite like, to, I could stick in here uh, the bottly things that fits in there. Again, since I've got one of these blank walls and no windows. And that would make, I could either have a set of shelves like that, that would go in there quite neat too. Uh, and that would allow me to have a bar go across the room. That might work. That gives me enough room to get figures behind it. The only problem with that, and it doesn't really matter, I don't think, um, is the fact that this tree trunk is supposed to be coming up through here, which is where I kind of like imagine quite a few of the patrons come into the bar because we know it's got the staircase right down under here, um, and there's another doorway in this bit here. So I imagine there's either a trap door or a door out of the tree trunk that comes into the main entrance of the bar there, which is kind of cool. And um, I could have a fireplace. So that, that's one possibility. Um, the other option is to go up the other end over here, which is a, a dead zone anyway. So I could... This is, the, this is the good bit. This is the bit I kind of like. This is where the model starts to make sense. You can't, can't see that in there. Can you see that in there? Can we? Can we? How about now? Tip it up more to me. Tip it up that way. Whoop, shit, that didn't work. 
How about like that? Can we get my hand in there? Now, I'm thinking of dropping that little set of shells, shells in there. Bing! Wah, wah, wah. And then um, I could maybe put one of these little units at the back. That's that little dresser from Terrain Crate. That would be kind of cool. Um, I don't necessarily need to have a bar. But it's kind of work would work kind of well with a bar that could go in there like that. And then could have the bar underneath. See, the thing is, is that the door the, the door for most normal people is here, so I need to have a way of. But then this could be the bar area. And then all of this thing could be tavern. That might work. All right, so going this way, what I've done, look, is I've got bar, got barrels, and the drinks cabinet there, and the bar here with a barrel on it, and enough room there to get figures behind, and room in this part of the bar to get figures. That's the Raven on a 50 millimeter base. And then that gives me all of this. Um, and I put a fireplace up against this solid wall here, which is kind of cool. Because then what I could do is I could add a, I could cut an XPS foam chimney and stick it out the back of the wall here, and it can grow up. And that could be independent from the roof, which might be quite cool. Um, and then that gives us quite a big plain space in here, and a reasonable one there. There's enough in there to be able to get figures in. Matt, if you play games with this and all you do is run around the base of it and don't go in it, I'm going to be bloody annoyed with you because uh, this is doing me in. This is. Uh, I need to put a door on the back of that door there, but that could kind of work. I can see how that works. The, the All that stuff is out of the way. Um, I think that's my best solution. Rather than have it in, in here, which makes more sense because then I could pretend that the tree comes up through this uh, and stick it out. Although... Of course, that's exactly what's going on with this tree here, where the bar should be as well. I think I'm going to have to face it that, you know, there's got to be some willing suspension of disbelief with this model, even more than there usually would be. Hey-ho. However, it's quite cool. I think I'm going to definitely go with the fireplace over here, because uh, then I can build a chimney that sticks out the side here, and that'll look kind of neat. Let's get some XPS foam out and see how that works. Right then, well, first floor layout kind of worked out, second floor layout worked out. Um, yeah, anyway, that top bit laid out, worked out. Um, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I was thinking that this was going to be a, a, a two-part uh, series, but it looks like it's going to have to be three, because I've already got ages into this video, and all I've done really is build... Uh, this roof section and work out what's going inside it. You'll notice that there's a chimney attached here. Um, that will be following up in the next video. There'll be part three of this. Uh, it's going to follow fairly hot on the heels of this video because I've got a little way into it, but I haven't got the roof done yet. And that's going to be quite a big job in its own right. So part three is going to involve the making of the roof uh, and working out how that's all going to work and the making of the XPS chimney here and then the paint job. Um, uh, yeah. I'm really quite happy with this. I'm surprised how it's come along. Um, I have really genuinely made this up and, and scratched my head and changed my mind and uh, thought differently about how this is going to work. And I think this is going to be quite a cool looking model. I still haven't thought about exactly how I'm going to do the foliage yet either. So I think that deserves to go into part three as well. So uh, uh thank you for watching part two the middle bit the empire strikes back bit of this uh trilogy although i don't think it's quite as cool as the empire strikes back but then you know well frankly what is um but part three will be coming along fairly soon this has been quite a big build uh i wasn't expecting to be that big because it was still only on a well it's on a a smallish base but the complexity of this is certainly going to make this one of the most kind of in most intricate and complex models that I've made so far, certainly for barrels and badges. Most of my B&B models, to be quite honest, are, are just boxes stacked up on top of each other. 
but the nature of the trees and various other bits and pieces have made this a really good challenge. Um, it's a good challenge for me to make, and I really hope that it's been quite fun for you guys to watch and see how I figure all of this out as well. So that is part two of the Burrows and Badgers Tumbling Feathers Tavern build. Um, and uh, if remember, if you fancy uh, uh, standing the chance of having me making you uh, your own piece of wargaming terrain, then you need to sign up at uh, patreon.com slash Magathia Builder Worlds. There's going to be a Magathia Builder Worlds competition uh, in the next little while. Certainly uh, before the end of the month, before the end of the year, I will have chosen somebody else and a new piece of terrain to make for them in 2023 so if you fancy that for the price of a cup of coffee you stand a chance of winning a piece of scenery made by me then you know jump in there that will be really really cool if not if you are already a patreon uh, supporter of mine or you're a subscriber then awesome if this is the first time you've found this channel then please uh click subscribe down below i love my subscribers to keep going up my problem is is the fact that i make models fairly niche kind of like uh uh, game systems so i'm never going to have uber thousands and thousands but it is cool i love to see that subscription rating kind of clicking up all the time uh, and do make sure please that you give a like and a, a, a comment down below that always is really helpful as well i love to see what you think of what i'm doing with my models apart from anything else um i like to engage with the, the guys and gals who are out there watching this and seeing what you make uh, of this and whether you think i'm completely bonkers or whether i should do this that or the other Remember, I have added stuff to this model this time around that you people suggested. So from that point of view, I like to think that we have a kind of like more than just a, a, a dialogue. It's worthwhile. I can pick your brains and you can certainly pick mine. So aside from that, um, there definitely, definitely will be another episode of Magathia Build the Worlds before Christmas because uh, this model is going to get finished off. And I'm hoping to start some other projects really soon too. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Magathia Builder of Worlds. You have been awesome. This isn't even close to being finished. Bugger.